Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. There we have a young man who's decided to paint art through his martial arts. He's combined his knowledge of architecture, his knowledge of martial arts to produce masterpieces. We have with us Sadiq and Ebola Williams. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you for being here, Sadiq. How are you doing fine. today? Fine, thank you. Great, great. So that's a very interesting video. So maybe you should give us a background into why you decided to combine all these elements together. Uh, um, I just, I've been... I guess like, I, I have this passion for being a multidisciplinary creative. Uh, I studied architecture first, point in time I was making music, wanted to set up, a, push the record label. While I was doing that, I was around filmmakers in London and we were doing a bunch of interesting stuff. And I've always seen, always like seen these like midpoints where everything connects. Maybe because I'm always in the middle of different things, activities. And it's, I've been toying with the idea for over possibly maybe a decade because I was a young artist when I was about four. And then break into architecture, I kind of stopped making art for a while. But I guess I was expressing my creativity through other outlets like writing poetry, through architecture, filmmaking, rap music, writing songs for people and stuff like that. So after, I think, moving back to Lagos, a few things occurred and... Uh, Big brother, like mentor, my friend, Ayola Bolan, the master artist, he's over really, he would always tell me things like, oh, you're an artist. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, because I've got a Prince doing project management. I actually moved back to sort of manage aspects of his career because I, I just found his work and his personality really interesting. And um, he just called me up out the blue at one point in time, goes, yeah, he's with a, in a secret location, I should come over. Uh, I should meet his patron, Mr. Pierre Chidiac. And we just, I just started painting. I was expressing myself. And I, the thoughts and the things that were in my head at the time, for, like maybe it's just been cooking or incubating. I just, and I found it fun. I, it was really therapeutic. And I found, like, I started finding myself again in that sense. So I felt like I was that child or that young person again. And I just continued, you know, with the consistency new ideas, and I love martial arts. So it was like uh, a midpoint. I saw a way to do the two things I love the most, like paint and express. Because I'm into sort of like the esoteric aspects of martial arts as well. Tai Chi, Qi Gong. There's a fighting, there's the fighting styles which are hard hitting, and there's the esoteric, which is very internal, health conscious, holistics, and, you know, like breathing well and making sure you keep yourself at optimal um, capacity if you can. So I just, you know, I, I just kept pushing the boundaries and people were receptive. Um, and I've been enjoying the process That's ever really since. That's really good. That's really good. Tell us a bit, though, about the benefits of martial arts. Personally, <laughs> I've always wanted to get into martial mm -hmm. arts, but I don't actually know what the direct benefits are. So uh -huh. what are the benefits? Mm, I, well, subjectively speaking, maybe like just from every other martial artist um, I've encountered, because I'm, I'm, I'm into mixed martial arts also, so I... I'm part of a dojo. We do Shotokan Karate, Taekwondo. I do... Why did Taekwondo? In ah. I, did, I did Taekwondo and I did Karate as well. My Already, mom basically made me. It was like a thing. Every mm -hmm. Tuesday, my brother and I were in Taekwondo lessons. Mm -hmm. Every Saturday, tennis lessons. Uh -huh. And there was one other day of the week that was for Karate. So I'm but guessing yeah. if I say stuff like focus, yeah, yeah. you know, that, that, uh, <laughs> those aspects of like being able to focus your mind and being able to sort of like rise above challenges. Yeah. Those are some of the like mental aspects. Like I, I, th I thank like my mom and my uncles and people who like and my, and my teachers who've, you know, who've guided me because I, I, like, I, I tell people sometimes, most times rather like, Martial arts and life is so synonymous, it, it, it's applicable beyond the dojo or training, like, to life, like, you Would know, you just... say that it's in touch with your subconscious mm -hmm. mind that you then express in your arts? Yes. So, there's a, in the esoteric aspects, when you're doing Tai Chi and Qigong, when you're breathing, you're doing things like bone breathing or stretching, or even yoga, you, you go in. And when you go inside, um, your, your experiences are a bit different. And the ability to express moves and katas and ideas or modes of expression. One of my favorite martial artists is Bruce Lee. And we talked about ultimate expression, authentic expression. Um, I, I moved on from Taekwondo, tested different styles, and I, I found myself in love with um, Jeet Kune Do. 
and Shaolin Kung Fu. There's, there's, there's a lot of depth in the, in, in the way you know, they create or they curate the, the, the moons and the katas. And you can't be expressive outwardly if you don't take care of the internal. And that's where the subconscious and superconscious and conscious kind of come in. In architectural parlance, this is really also relative. So in some cases, some would argue, like in, you know, they say carpenter most times when you translate certain Asian texts. That's, that could be synonymous with the architect or the mindset of an architect. So you're constructing your moves. I like in those two things. Like when I'm making pieces or I'm creating um, katas or I'm playing around with stuff or I'm testing myself. Uh, I see I see the similitudes in all these areas, and I enjoy the process of like mixing and matching and melding and and figuring like um, what's the next thing, what's the next challenge, and I the process is very key for me. I don't just create art because you have skill. You know, man, anyone can say that anyone can have skill or acquire skill over time, but can you create something truly unique that stands out or is authentic to your inner core? That's where the um, I think that's where that's that's where I where I am um, focused on right now, and that's what I'm enjoying. All right, let's look at how well martial arts is being received in Nigeria. Okay. I think we subconsciously receive it in our fashion sense. I mean, mm. kimono is coming back. Yes. You're wearing one mm -hmm. here, and everybody has a kimono these mm -hmm. days. It's quite mm -hmm. fashionable. But how would you say that the Nigerian audience has? You know, accepted martial arts. I remember that I went for a few taekwondo classes, okay. and I was stopped because I was a girl. And they said, "You know, what? girls really? don't really." Yes, yeah. By, wow. by, they, by who? Said, girls actually was from family, though. Okay. But I knew it was from a place of <laughs> mm -hmm. ignorance. Now mm -hmm. I know it's, it's you're mm -hmm. a girl. You don't need stuff like mm -hmm. that. So, how would you say society has responded to martial arts in um, generally? In Nigerian is, society. I'm finding it really interesting. It's like um, about a decade ago, when I was. In Lagos for a year, and I, I was working at um, Architect Ira Koko's practice. I was still pushing these ideas and nuances, and there was a lot of resistance at the time, either from like uh, religious sex or like societal sex. People not really understanding yoga, tai chi, and likening it to stuff to do with the devil, and that has nothing to do with that at all. I can definitely assure you, I'm a practicing Muslim. Um, I'm open-minded. I read the Bible. I read the Torah. I read books worthy of like um, anything. Sort of like you know, and feed the mind and the body and the spirit. Yeah. So, it's it's not as woo as people think it is. You know, the moment you start to practice, you start to see the benefits. Um, now with the dojo and I, look, oddly enough, I'm into part of a bunch of filmmakers looking to push the action movie genre. I did a bit of stunt uh, work, sort of like coordination. For, um, I, th I think it was early in the year for Beverly Naya and O.C. Kweje. I think the film's out, and I can't remember the title off the top of my head. It's been, I think it's, it was around March, April. Um, I've also used it as part of um, Dance Gathering 2018, which I was really proud to be a part of. That's, that's put on by Kudus, Onikeku, and Onye Azuzu. And it's a multidisciplinary approach, too. Um, he's a professor of dance, shuttles between Paris, other parts of the world, and Nigeria. And Dance Gathering was really, really um, another sort of like a milestone for me because I got to express myself in the middle of Broad Street. And we had two weeks to prepare. And I can safely say, like, you know, the way Kudu San Onye put the structure, the Dance Gathering ideology is really, really amazing. You, have, you had, like, um, Africans or people of Nubian descent from all parts of the world, different disciplines, photographers, filmmakers, poets, rappers, Singers, I, I came on to, to show people, show his students the correlations between dance and martial arts. Because to be a uh, great martial or formidable martial artist, you need to be able to move in rhythm and step. And dance is very key. Bruce Lee was actually a very good cha cha. Wait, dancer. so if you're not a good dancer, you can't be good at martial it, arts? It, it's challenging. Wow, I need it's, to go it's for one dance argument. classes. It's, it's one argument. But, uh, <laughs> dance, I can yeah. dance, but I don't think I'm a good dancer. Oh, really? I think ah. everyone, you know what though, I think everyone can dance, but everyone I just feel can. as though, I think everyone actually can. Mm -hmm. If you can correlate, yes, you can dance. Exactly. But I wouldn't say I'm a good dancer, but either well, way. <laughs> I, think, I think good or good, let me dance get, is get dance. paradoxical here. Yeah. Or like, you know, good, good, is good, good or is relative. Yeah. And I feel like if you apply yourself, you, the human mind or body is, is, is capable of anything. Um, you know, like, even with, the, with um, um, Jet Li, for example, yeah. Wushu, it's very based on fluid movement and dance. 
So there's that ability to move from dance into martial arts. I think um, Chris Brown is a perfect example of yeah. what I'm talking about. If you've seen some of his moves and vice versa. So Dance Gathering was like beautiful. We had this architect. I worked with a fellow architect as well, Stephen Ajadi, and a guy called Norman Teague, and um, uh, African American lady. She They've worked with an artist who I look up to in Chicago called um, Theaster Gates. He's, he's very much an influence on how I, you know, melding these things together. He does buildings, paintings, and okay. uses music, jazz. He creates and curates this, these worlds. So the buildings become art pieces in a sense. And then you have the layers as well of the art pieces, the composition, the music, and, on, and everything just flow seamlessly. I'd love to see pictures of that. Now, mm. last year, you had the Memoirs of a Black Box. Okay. Tell us a bit yes. about that. That that incorporated poetry, right? Yes. Okay, so tell us a bit about how you managed to incorporate poetry into a huge exhibition. <sighs> um, it was actually not just poetry. It was, there was theater as mm. well. Um, so like I said, I'm really big on this, passionate about being a multidisciplinary artist, not just a visual artist. And I am inspired by the likes of the Bauhaus group, mm. an architectural movement in the 20s, who influenced everything from fashion, architecture, graphic design, mm. and whatnot. Then you move on to the 50s, you have the Archigram group. Um, there were also like a bunch of architects with different skill sets, and they, they predicted most of what we exist, we're living now. What do you now. think people are going to see mm -hmm. in 21st century art when they look back at our art history? Ah. Um, I'm not, this is, this is possibly shamanic on some level, but I would hope that they see, they see, um, they see authenticity, they see a correlation, they see quality, and they see pride. Because I feel like um, we've been through a lot as a nation, as a people, and one of the reasons I um, Black Box was uh, important to myself and my co-collaborators was the ability to show the Nigerian public that um, the collective or the collectivist um, philosophy that we used to have prior to the colonial encounter still works. You know, you have comments like, oh, you can't work with people. Mm. That's your opinion. It's your perspective. It's not my reality, per se. Um, and for me, expressing and showing beyond the shadow of doubt is critical. So when you have a conversation, it can be argued against. But when you demonstrate physically or beyond the shadow of doubt, then you have to engage. And then it's now a question of what's next. So for me, that I, I, I was really happy that happened. Um, I had the likes of Rez the Poet, had the likes of Don Algunaike, had the likes the of Kayefi. You know, it's almost... We're, we're, oh, you mentioned the other day that that's one of your favourite poets, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> Donna, Donna is a huge influence on myself and we influence ourselves. We are part of a collective of um, creators. We work together from time to time. Very quickly, before we yes. let you go, what's the future for your work? Where do you see yourself? Uh, I see myself on the global arena. Uh, I see myself pushing, um, bringing Africa into a sort of positive light. I'm not saying there are others that aren't doing that. Thankfully, you know, we have, we've just got a blockbuster in, in the movie Black Panther. I'm a comic book fan, and I sort of predicted that I would, you know, that, that was possibly going to happen. Because behind the scenes, I'm, I'm thankful enough to have certain friends. And one of my um, friends, she's friends with Ryan Coogler. And she told me about how he thinks and what he's doing. And I've been following his career and I've been like, wow. So I, I felt like he did, as a comic book fan, he did justice to the character and brought certain, because it's, it's challenging translating comic book narrative into um, mm -hmm. film, yeah. into movie. So any director that's capable of pulling that off, like, yeah, I take my hats off. So when are you inviting me and Olive to come and paint and do some um, martial arts? Very to soon, like, as, as soon as, as soon that. possible. <laughs> <laughs> you, see, you guys still have your muscle memory and stuff. Huh? So you still have your muscle memory. Yeah. Well, give us one move now. Us one Teach move us one move. Um, <laughs> you, you don't know now. When, when I finish that. work, there might be one boy disturbing me. I might okay. have to, you know, use some self-defense. <laughs> um, let me see. You guys are actually Ouch. doing... Oh, sorry, is that, is that okay? Oh, yeah, which one do I do? <laughs> so, you're flowing. You could do something like this. So, move up. It's a block. Strike. Down. Up. To the chin. But I'd have to 
show you in the dojo because oh, when you so got the I moves, have, okay so when we come for a date or, in your studio you know, you <laughs> that's the perfect exactly. plan I'll come and do some match up like you, know, yeah. you guys are moving like super <laughs> me, i don't even know how to put my hands to punch let me um, not lie um punch bruce lee style would be you know you so as you hit the point of contact you clasp your fist and then you bring it back recoil so the physics of interesting. it interesting yeah, <laughs> <don't, laughs> it's like a newtonian physics it's applicable olive so just don't, dabbed with this olive yes, just dab. dabbed with this I, I, I think on that note that's like capoeira i think on that note i need a break so <laughs> you <laughs> can how can people contact you for more information um, on social just media just hit me on instagram dm me Okay, the time at, being at Sadiq Ajibola Williams. Okay, thank you so much thank for coming you. on the show. Be no rest problem. assured that when Olive and I go and do some, you know, martial arts and painting, we'll bring that content to you. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.